Hi, I'm Jacory, and this is not a drill. I hope you loved episode four as much as I did. The story in there about series parents, Dooney and Pavetta, is one of my favorite parts of season one. Episode five, though, is my favorite entire episode of the season. As with episode four, it's best that you experience the details of this episode on your own. That way you can feel the emotional responses that come with discovering each new detail. That said, I do have some things to help prepare you, so let's get right into it. Number one, timelines drawing closer. We're starting to see more clues that the triad stories are getting closer in time. Episode four set up more of Ciri's background through Geralt's story in Sintra. We see Ciri's parents, her mother Pavetta, and her father, Lord Urchion, nicknamed Duni. We also get more hints about the reputation Queen Calanthe has in Sintra and other kingdoms. In Yennefer's story, she mentions that three decades have passed during her service in Adern, putting about 30 years between her ascension in Episode 3 and the incident with the baby in Episode 4. Ciri herself is with the Dryads in Brokilon, and at the end of the episode, we see that Yennefer's old classmate Fringilla, who's been a mage in Nilfgaard since they ascended, is using her powers to help Kahir track down Ciri. Number two, Geralt doesn't believe in destiny. Geralt saves Dooney's life in episode four, and he invokes the law of surprise as payment. However, he does this as more of a flippant action to avoid having to claim a reward. That's because Geralt isn't much for believing in destiny, and thus he has no intention of claiming a reward from Dooney. In the show, Malsak warns him about the real and catastrophic consequences for rejecting destiny but Geralt doesn't take the warning seriously and instead goes on about his life. Number three, Kahir's search continues. In episode five, you'll see more of Kahir organizing his search for Ciri. This is all happening at the same time as Ciri's story in Brokilon. As you saw in a scene near the end of episode four, Kahir is working with Fringilla. Recall that not only does Fringilla serve Nilfgaard as a mage, she was actually assigned to Nilfgaard after Yennefer took her original assignment to Adern. You'll notice this crew using some dark methods and magic to aid their hunt for Ciri. Number four, the Doppler. Episode five has a magical being known as a Doppler. A Doppler is a shapeshifter, mostly taking human forms. When the episode starts, the Doppler looks like this. The Doppler refers to itself using the plural pronoun we. There's a good reason for this. When the Doppler takes on a human's form, they also gain that human's knowledge and memories, adding to the collective knowledge and memories they already have. When we first see the Doppler, another character hints that the Doppler cannot interact with silver. That aligns with what we know about Geralt having to use a silver sword to slay the monsters he hunts. This would categorize a Doppler with those same magical monsters. Number five, black market mages. In Yennefer's story, you'll hear references to mages operating independently from the Brotherhood of Sorcerers. Knowing that the Brotherhood is a powerful political organization, you can probably guess that this creates something like a black market for magic. These mages can even form their own self-regulated power structures within that black market space, like a cartel. The Brotherhood tries to suppress this market throughout the continent. Number six, the djinn. Genies in a bottle do exist in the Witcher universe. Geralt's story in episode five opens with him searching for a djinn. As in popular genie legends, there are three wishes involved with releasing a djinn from a bottle or in this case, from an amphora. However, the details about how a djinn operates are unique to the Witcher universe. Listen for Geralt to give more background when he speaks to various folks about the djinn throughout the episode. Number seven, Rind, Redania, and Chiraden. Geralt's story in episode five takes place in Rind, which is a city within a wealthy kingdom named Redania. Rind is directly north of Vizima, the capital city of Tamaria. Remember that Tamaria is the kingdom where we met Faltest in Episode 3. Chiraden is an elf healer in Episode 5, who we first see in an encampment in Rind. Chiraden's dialogue helps orient us to Rind and what to expect there. 
This is the mayor of Rend. He shows up a couple of times, and part of the episode occurs at his home. Number eight, the druid from Skellige. Let's wrap up this list with a revisit to Mousesack in episode four, the only character to appear in both Geralt's and Ciri's timelines during the episode. We learn that Mousesack isn't one of the mages assigned to Sintra by the Brotherhood of Sorcerers. Instead, after the engagement banquet, he chose to stay in Sintra and help Pavetta manage her inherent magic skills. Thus, we can assume that he carried that commitment to Pavetta's daughter Ciri, too, and he may be related to why Kahir and his Nilfgaard soldiers captured him alive after the sacking of Sintra. During episode 5, Yaskir refers to Mausak as a druid, rather than a mage or a sorcerer. In the Witcher universe, a druid is a kind of hippie magic user dedicating themselves to the knowledge of nature and to nurturing the sick and injured. That certainly aligns with his desire to nurture Pavetta and Ciri. In a very brief statement to Geralt, Mausak mentions that he had been an advisor to the court at Skellige for several years, so he was attending the banquet at Sintra as part of the delegation from Skellige. Skellige is a kingdom consisting of islands in the Great Sea, west of the continent's mainland and near Sintra's coast. Mausak points out two others from Skellige who are in attendance, the king's brother Aest, who marries Calanthe, and the king's and Aest's nephew, Kraken Crate, who is one of Pavetta's suitors. Episode 4 also made it clear that Mausak and Geralt have a good history together predating this banquet. In case future seasons of the show go back and cover that history, though, I won't go into it here. If you decide to dive into the books and games, note that Mausak occasionally goes by the name of Ermion, so both names refer to the same person. That's it. I think you're ready for episode 5. Check it out and let me know if this video was helpful for you. And subscribe to the channel and click the bell to get a notice for when I post my next video preparing you for episode 6, Rare Species.